This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Made to Measure Leggings class from SewHere.com. This online class brings ZD right into your sewing room to show you how to measure, draft, and construct a pair of leggings based on your personal measurements. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings to find out more and get access to all the videos and course materials immediately. That's SewHere.com slash leggings. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. I'm ZD Donahue. And today, we are going to talk about digital pattern drafting. Which is something Mallory does that I don't. That's right. <laughs> also, okay, I think this is a really good example of when you say something is, like, easy. Have you ever been in this situation? You can be on, like, either side of the, the equation here. And you say, oh, I don't know how to do this thing. And somebody else goes, oh, it's oh, really it's easy. easy. Yeah. Well, anything is easy. Once you learn it. Once you learn it. Right. And, and now, you know, so I was, I was like pretty intimidated. That's, that's funny because I try not to say that now, to I, people. Uh, yes. I, tr I try to say, once you've learned it. No, you I. You know, or something like that. I try not to say, oh, it's yes, easy. Yes, yes. I've. Because you never know what's going to be. Some people, some people, things are you never know what's going to be difficult for a person or what's yeah. going to be easy for a person. Everyone's different. No, it's like I've tried to say it's it's simple once you learn it right. or yeah. it is it is learnable or right. something like that. I have I've really or tried I'll to say take something that. like you'll be real happy once you've learned this. Yeah, or no, I've like really that, tried yeah. to kind of take that because yeah. what it can do is if you say that to someone else and they're and like, then they have well, any sort of struggle. Um, it's not easy yeah. for me, you know. And actually, another thing is. I used to think that some of the things, some of my very specialized skills were just easy things, and I have since learned, no. Nope, Not everyone can do them, right? I have skills, right. and I need to value them right, as such. Right, I'm right, not right, saying, right. like, you know, I never, you know, help anybody out, but I used to think, oh, doesn't everybody know that about right. Facebook? Or doesn't right. everybody oh, this know is that? So, this, this is so simple. Everybody knows this. We, you know, don't, we don't need to do a tutorial on this. Yeah, anybody can do so this. So you could right. be diminishing your own accomplishment, accomplishments, and then right. you'd also be making somebody else feel bad. Right. So just being like, oh, it's easy. It's like, well, you know. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Digital pattern drafting. What I think is funny about it and why somebody might say it's easy or how I think, oh, well, this is easy now. I know how to do it, is it is very much like pattern drafting on a piece paper. of paper. Mm -hmm. It's a big digital piece of paper. Right, okay? right, right. So I did take a course on this, and then I've learned uh, through sort of refining our own process, uh, and then I've learned through – Working for someone else, I've been doing some independent contractor work. I'm not going to say who it's for because I don't, like, they didn't make me sign a non-disclosure, but I don't know if they want me talking about it. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm doing it for a fairly well-known pattern company, and one of the reasons I signed on to do it is because I thought I'd learn things. Right. So, this pattern company said we need someone to do some of the finishing work in our digital patterns we have the system worked out. Right. We have the we have the process. We just need right. someone to do it. And I thought, oh, well, like I know how to do this process, but I can learn something. And I did. I knew I knew exactly right. what to do, what they told me. And I'm like, oh. Anyway, so digital pattern drafting though, for the patterns that we publish, right. Is a little different okay. than traditional yes. digital yes. pattern yes. drafting. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh so we'll get we'll get to there. But I just want to start off with the First thing is the program that I use is Adobe Illustrator. There are many different programs right. out there. Adobe Illustrator is literally a drawing program, a very advanced okay. drawing program. The other thing I think that maybe we should clarify here yeah. is this is not a pattern fitting program. That's right. So yeah. it's not where you're <laughs> taking your measurements and putting them into something and coming up with a pattern. Well, okay. you could. Well, 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 
it's different. Though. Yes. It's, no, it's I'll, not, okay, I'll right. clarify. Cause right. Do mom, clarify what Yeah, what is. mom's talking about. So, yes, I, this is good for me to bring up. So, I'm using Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm. It's just this drawing program. There's right. Corel Draw. There's a couple other things. Right. But then what mom is saying is there are programs out there that say that they are pattern drafting softwares. Right. And they have functionality built in to where you can just say, hey, this is my bust. This is right. my waist. This is my hip. And it has code in it that says, all right, now we know how to do a t-shirt pattern Right, for now you. we can make jeans for you, now we can make yep. a t-shirt pattern for you, whatever. Yes, and so there are softwares out there like that. Now, the thing is, they so, all require some right. tweaking. So they're drafting, they're drafting the pattern for your measurement yeah for your, your measurements for your measurement that you know you would make your muslin out of or, yes right now in adobe illustrator what you're doing is actually you're using some of the most simplistic parts of the program right in order to just draw a big thing right. and i think erin um of uh, her um blog is called sie macht and that means she makes in german she uh, did a little thing about how to do our uh, leggings in Adobe Illustrator. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. to, so our leggings drafting course, we showed you how to draft it out on paper. And she did it in Adobe Illustrator. And so mm -hmm. here's the deal. When you start to draft any pattern, like in our EZT class or right. leggings class or whatever, you start out with some body measurement and you're going to draw a line and you right. know how long it is. And we call that the reference line. Or, or we right, have well, called it. I don't, I'm not yeah. saying it's the reference line. Right. I'm saying it's any line. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend it's that, you know, shoulder to hem or, okay. or it right. is quarter of your bust or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. You know that it's 20 inches or it's 10 inches or it's whatever. And you go over to Adobe Illustrator and you can type in. That you want a 10-inch line made. That's right. And boom, there's your 10-inch line. That's right. Okay? So it's that, in a way, is where I'm coming from with it's simple because it's not like there is magic to making a pattern drafting line. It's just a line That's right. like anything else. Okay? So when you do set up your file in Adobe Illustrator, you can't be drafting a pattern for um, an adult on like a 4 by 4 square. Right? That's right. <laughs> so you're going to tell Adobe Illustrator to um, set this up as a large artboard or a large file format. And I set our files up to be the big file format that you can get printed right. like it's staples. So that you can get a PDF. Yes. Um, so that you can get that 36 by 48 or whatever. Right. You know. Um, and then, but like you said, reference line, that is often something you start out with. Right. Is just one big long straight line. Um, and then you're going to fill in your lines. And the course I took, um, it, which was, it's kind of funny. I took this course from Berta, and I think it still exists. But they have you use the Winifred Aldrich book, you know, Metric Pattern Cutting for Women. Right. And there are instructions in that book for how to draft these patterns. And it's like you take this, you know, this, this measurement. fraction right. of this measurement and then you add a centimeter and then you add a da 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 And so you're, you know, you're really just drawing a bunch of lines instead of using a pencil on paper. You are doing it digitally, and everything is measurable on this. So let's say I'm going to do a line for my quarter bust. So my bust is 40 inches. I'm going to do a 10-inch line. And if I need a line then that's like 5 inches lower than my bust, I just pop up a 5-inch line and then put the next thing there. Right. You know, so it's not – um. Once you get the hang of sort of entering these lines, it's like drawing. So if you've used paint before, okay, and you've drawn a figure in paint, you've, you know, uh, I'm talking Microsoft Paint, you know. Oh, okay. I <laughs> okay. was going to say. What? Uh, you what mean kind paint? of paint? I mean, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. Paint the program. So yes. Instead the program of being paint. in Microsoft Paint and just fooling around, you know, and drawing lines and stuff, it's just a more precise process right. where you're, um, and, you know, you don't have to 
approximate a 10 inch line right or anything you can like ask that. for one you click the line function you put in that you want it to be 10 inches and there it is and you know you have yeah you can do this line. in centimeters too if yes, you want that's right you can, and so actually you can choose which way you're going to do I it i do draft in centimeters uh-huh. because it's more precise right? right so precision means that it's um what do i want to say the well, units are smaller the units okay are smaller. It's basically more exact, yeah it's more exact so instead of being like Oh, what's the decimal percentage for an eighth? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, for um, imperial. It's a lot easier to divide tenths. Than, yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. So you, uh, now, where do those measurements come from? Right. Right? That's the, that I think is the this hard part. This is the funny part and the standard yes. that we're all dealing with. Yes. Yeah, so that's where the funny part comes in. So with, I just want to make it clear though, with that with digital pad, and I'm sorry if anybody thought this was going to be like how to, um, but you're basically just doing lines, lines, lines. Some of your lines are like you said, sort of like reference lines. Right. And then some of your lines are the actual pattern. Right. They're going to so, be, say your cutting line or your yeah, seam line. Exactly. And so you start out you're getting with this. the shape out that's of right them. you start out with something that looks like a bunch of perpendicular lines and then you draw in right like a right. side seam curve right. on a t-shirt and that is a place in adobe illustrator where that's more of an art than a science it's not strict you draw right. a curve and you then curve it out and make it look reasonable and i think okay. a lot of times this is why someone will say oh so-and-so's patterns fit me perfect now yeah sometimes they'll just say oh they fit really well and this is what bothers me uh-huh. in our facebook page is when someone says these are well yeah patterns. yeah i yeah. you know i give me a reference to a good pattern for you know whatever a, a jacket or what and then someone will say Oh, this one, and it fits perfect every time. You, you that that fits you perfect. It every fits time. the person who's made it right. Right. And patterns will. It's like shoes. I have. A, I can wear a certain brand of shoes. I know that a five and a half size certain shoe always fits my foot uh-huh. from a certain manufacturer. And then I go to another manufacturer, and that's not true. That's right. It's because. It might even be the same length, but it's shaped differently. That's right. Okay? So that's where that comes into play. When when you ask for a re- pattern recommendation, it really needs to be sort of on the basic shape, maybe. That's right. Or, you know, style, not the shape, the style. And maybe the instructions and how, you know, how it's put together and things like that. Because not... And we can have the same measurements and have a different shape. That's right. And so that is a choice that the designer is making when they go in and they right. draw those curves. Right. Even, right. okay, with an arm side. Exactly. Big time. Exactly. There could be a lot of variation. Uh, so when you use a book like Metric Pattern Cutting for Women or you pay to access a sizing survey. Right. Okay. Which is like some company went out and measured many, 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 many a thousand people. women or a thousand uh, men, a or thousand, thousand whatever. Yeah, right. exactly. A thousand then, dogs, whatever. They've kind of averaged this stuff mm-hmm. out. Those are numbers you can work with, okay? Uh, and then you can work with uh, different numbers, okay? You can work with your own numbers. That's right. You can, and we did a sizing survey. Uh, for our patterns, and other pattern companies have done that. Um, and you have to break down the sizes at some point. Okay, and this right. is why, you know, don't get too angry when something doesn't fit you out of the box. Because they had to choose something, you know. Right. <laughs> and you they, just weren't lucky that day. Yeah, they weren't right. choosing. They weren't choosing your hip or, or your butt or your waist or whatever. Or your hip-to-waist ratio right. or whatever. Da, 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 da. So that's why... With the spirit of our patterns, they truly are kind of like templates. Well, and um, that's not even perfect all the time. No. Right? There's always... And it is just like uh, the pattern programs that yeah. that are sold out there. And they're saying, oh, you can draft, you know, your jeans pattern. You know, this. All you have to do is put in these 42 different measurements, yep. right? No. And what will happen is you will need to make a muslin. That's right. You always got to test. do not know the shit. Nobody can know... I mean, now they're coming out with all these digital things supposedly to scan your body, you know, and, uh-huh. and, and maybe someday. Now, as far as I know, those are extremely, extremely expensive. 
okay, to have that done. And they're not perfect either, and you still have to make a muslin, and you still, you know. And again, as Mallory has always said, and I have always said, different fabric. Well, that's where you get into it, the you fabrics. Know, different fabric, whatever. So. Or how much you ate for lunch. That's right. Or how squishy your thigh is yeah. compared to someone right, else's thigh. Right. If you've got a lunch baby going on and you that's didn't right. account for it when you made that, it's not going to fit you after or lunch. Or your waist measurement. Yeah, your belly measurement. Is it more to the back or is it more to the front? Right. You know, or blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm not supposed to do that. Mom told me not to do that. da 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 I did it a lot last episode. Yes, you did. I did? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you, like, <laughs> didn't finish the word fabric. Okay. You... <laughs> I said fab. You were like fab, fab. and then you moved on. Fab. <laughs> I don't finish my sentences. Yeah, mom doesn't finish her words. I saw somebody else do and that the I other say, day. I, I've heard it too. I considered them very intelligent. Oh, go ahead. it's probably a sign of intelligence. It is. I'm yes, sure it is. Absolutely. Okay, so where were we? Okay, you get to draw a bunch of lines in the computer. Okay. Right. <laughs> and on our patterns, like you said, there is an interpretation of where you draw that line between, say, yes. one. Yeah, you know, one plotted one point to the point other to plotted another. point. Okay, so let's take a break and come back, and we'll talk about, um, let's just talk briefly about size charts, and then we're going to talk about grading between sizes. This might have to be five episodes. Never mind. No, okay, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, we'll be right back. Hey, ZD. Wouldn't it be cool if everyone who listened to this podcast could learn how to make perfectly fitting leggings directly from you, the leggings expert? Well, yes, Mal. That's why we produce the Made to Measure Leggings class. I teach anyone, no matter their age, ability, or gender, to make perfectly fitting leggings based on their measurements. And if someone is feeling particularly generous, they can make leggings for anyone who they can get to stand still long enough to measure. You, yes you, can get immediate access to all the videos and course materials in the Made to Measure Leggings class by going to SoHere.com slash leggings. This online class allows you to complete the process at your own pace, and you own it forever, so you can re-watch it as many times as you need. Stop struggling with the leggings that roll down or sag in the wrong places. I'll be your guide as you create leggings that are made especially for you. No matter what your equipment or skill level, ZD covers everything from measuring, drafting, cutting, and construction on a sewing machine or serger in this class. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings and get started today. Sewing out loud. And we're back. Okay, so. The sizing charts, okay, this is where things get really dicey and right. crazy. <laughs> and it, it, so it's not as easy. I'm remembering how hard it is now because it's like, oh, it's just easy just to put in right. some lines, right? Um, when I learned how to do this from this uh, Berta style course, she was kind of explaining the different ways that you can grade a pattern. And she said – the way that I do it is I do the smallest size and the largest size. Uh-huh. Okay. And then you use a tool in Adobe Illustrator called the blend tool. Right. And I, at first, I had this really visceral reaction against doing it like that. I thought, no, every size needs to be graded, you know, uh, it, or, or drafted independently of itself. And then I looked, and that's exactly what the blend tool does <laughs> in Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> okay. So – You've told the story before about how someone took the halter dress pattern and then like blew it up on a projector and thought mm-hmm. they were getting a diff- a bigger size. Yeah. Okay. Well, they were. They were. They were getting <laughs> something. But here's what happens. When you use the blend tool, it doesn't just blow up the pattern. Right. Right. Because – Let's talk about, like, the shoulder width of a pattern, the smallest size, it might be 8, and then the largest size, it's, I don't know. Maybe 10. Let's say 12 or 10. Yeah, yeah exactly. maybe, maybe. But right. the bust is, goes from right. 30 to 50 or right. something. Okay. Well, or or just even say the, the chest length. Yes. Yes. Something. Something like so, that. Or the neck to, you know, neck to waist length. So this blending tool, what it does is it, make sizes that fit in between those right. things. And if you look at your size chart you're working with, you're going to see that 
your shoulder width, if it goes from 8 to 12, that's a 4-inch difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And if there's 10 sizes in there, it's going to be 4 divided by 10. Right. That's the size. So if you had had drafted in between each of those, you were going to come up with what Adobe was going to come up with That's right. anyway. That's right. And same thing then between the bus sizes. If it goes from 30 to so 50. So ju- what you just said is Adobe is not just. No, Adobe's not being a projector. Right. right? It, is not, it is not putting a pattern on your uh, printer and going, I want to make it 100 times bigger. No. That's it's not, not what doing it's that. doing. That's right. So you get your largest size and your smallest size. Now, right. here's where we come into like talking about plus size stuff. Right. Um, where when you start to get into the larger numbers, that's where you this okay, this is why I don't understand why pattern companies um resist this so much. Okay. Okay. Because so I don't much, know what you're gonna say. Because Go ahead. so let's say you draft a pattern for a two to a twelve. Okay. Okay. Well now draft it for a sixteen. And blend between 12 to 16. Okay? Okay. Your steps yeah. might be bigger. Yeah. Okay? The the difference in the shoulder width might, instead of going up a half inch each time, uh-huh. it might go up an inch uh-huh. each time. Okay? Now get up to size, whatever, 26. da 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 Just keep drafting and blending. I don't get it. I don't understand why they say it's hard. Okay? Pattern companies resist this because they say it's difficult to grade differently. And it does change. It changes between the Mm -hmm. larger and the smaller sizes. Okay? So a 2 to a 12 is going to be graded differently than a 12 to a 16. I see what you're saying. Yeah. uh, Or 12 to a 22 or whatever. Anyway, okay, the computer does it for you. (laughs) You can even draft for a different bust dart Depth, depth or something uh-huh. uh, so she's basically cup size yes cup size and that's something that like cashmere wet patterns does right. okay so it is some effort okay right but it's different than actually manufacturing clothes yes where yes it does get a bit more costly to like cut the fabric out differently and like fabric layouts and stuff like that but in terms of drafting I think it should be something that these companies can figure out. Yeah. Okay. Just like we did. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Now, I have to say, the patterns we've come out with are an underwear pattern and a t-shirt pattern. Okay. They're made of knits. They're probably some of the simpler, that's that's some of the simpler patterns out there versus like a bra that's cut in too many pieces yes. and when you get into bras being cut into more pieces then you do kind of get into a place where okay this style of bra doesn't work for larger cup sizes smaller right. band sizes yeah, absolutely okay there are things like that but you've seen we've seen brands adapt you know uh pattern company brands right. adapt and say and then also say we don't think that this style is going to work for these uh, right uh different proportions you know and i totally agree with that um so I took a pattern survey, or excuse me, a size survey of our people, and I found out that we needed to go, I can't remember how many inches larger, you know. And I also saw that there were some people on the smaller side, you yeah, know. some tinies. Uh, but that the shoulder width, say, like, didn't go down, right. you know, as much or whatever. So what we do with our patterns is I draft the smallest size, I draft the biggest size, and you get to plot your own points, Okay. So let's pretend you get to choose your own points. They're, That's right. They're already plotted. You get to choose. So you choose your points. That's right. So uh, you're going to choose your shoulder width. And right. let's pretend it's, you know, it's 10 right. and it's sort of in the middle of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But then your bust point is very large. So it's on the edge of the spectrum. Right. Okay. Then your waist is here or there or whatever and you're kind of going to all these different places right okay on on the pattern and then you're adjusting them one thing that this did help us do so we did this for a t-shirt instead of pub- publishing another class we published this drafting guide right so that we could draft your arm side and your sleeve cap right for you okay right here's the other cool thing that you can do in a digital pattern drafting software, you can walk the pattern pieces 
just like you would a paper pattern piece, and you can see if your sleeve cap is going to fit in your arm side. It's like once you kind of figure out this drafting software, you can pick up those pieces with your mouse and move them around, see if they fit. Um, you can measure things and see if your dart was big enough, see if everything is lining up properly, okay? And that is something I did with our drafting guides is I asked people for their measurements and I did, so they weren't, you know, they weren't in a conventional size, right? I wasn't in a conventional right. size. I would have, um, if it was a traditional pattern, I would have been in, who is? yeah, anyway. I would have been an eight yeah. at the waist and a six at the hip. Yeah. So I plotted my points on there and tested and saw if my pattern pieces were going to line up, you know, and they did. So that's kind of cool. So our patterns don't have sizes. They have literal measurements on them. Right. So if your waist is a 30, you look for the 30 point on the, at the waistline. You know, if your hip is a 40, you look for the 40 point at the waistline. So the size you wind up is you are size Mallory. Yes. Are you our size ZD? Are you our size Kim? Are you our, you are you know, size Amy, because that's what, it's your size. Yes. It's your shape. It's not, it's not the collective guess. That's right. That a lot of pattern people have to make. And yeah, there's, I mean, you either do it this way or the other right. way. And and those and, other. And those numbers they have are arbitrary. Yeah. Has anybody ever ordered anything from like Asia? Oh yeah. And it's just like. And it tells you, no, it'll even say when you're ordering. If you are a, a size, you know, two, four, order extra large. Yeah, because sure. Because they're, you know. It's arbitrary. Right. It's arbitrary. And those, you know, those people, their average people are measuring smaller, apparently. Yes. Yeah, so you'll get different averages depending on different right. populations. Right. And then you get brands who want to be using different numbers. Right. Um. So we call there are such thing as vanity sizes. There's that too. Where you can go into some stores and you might be a size eight in one store, but the next store, the vanity store, you're a size zero. That's right. Or they're starting off in a different place for whatever right. reason, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's the whole thing about vanity sizing and like assuming that everyone wants to be thin, right? Well, you know, okay. it's funny <laughs> that, that there there's a store that I know of. I don't know how many there are. I don't buy the many clothes, but I went there because I saw a clothes someone else had and I was like, really? And that only cost that? Oh, I'm going there. And I went in and they had the vanity sizing, right? And mm -hmm. I picked a two and a four to try on because that's like where I am, you know. Well, they were huge. They were humongous. On and, you. Right. And what it got down to is they didn't have a size that fit me. Okay. So it wasn't very vain for me. Like I couldn't, you know, there just wasn't a size. But this is what I'm saying is don't expect yeah. your size to be there. Don't expect it to be the same number. Yeah. Um. So when you're drafting with our patterns we don't have them like in layers and some pattern companies will they'll you'll be like oh no i only want to print off the size 18 or i right. only want to print right. off the size 6 or the whatever you're going to print off and so anyway um you are going to with our patterns this is where when you get into the larger sizes it does change how they fit on paper that's available right. and that's why a lot of brands uh can't afford to manufacture clothes in several sizes. That's why there, you know, some companies will have different lines. They'll have right. a petite. Right. They'll have a junior. They'll right. have a plus size. Right. They'll have a da-da-da. It's good because if they can right. just start from scratch, that's easier than trying to adapt right. something else right. to any – that's why there's kids' clothing and that's why, you know, da-da-da-da-da. Um, there we go. Uh, so that's why there's – that's why there are those different lines of clothing – for the, uh, for the different sizes of people. Um, right. And that's why some brands can't afford to make a bra in every single size. Because there's like an infinite size. It's also bra, why you know? the size in this company is not the same as the size in you know, And that's the why other you can company. never say, oh, well, I wear a 32B, so right. you know, in what? 
Right. You know, right. In, in and not only, not <laughs> only that, but, you know, there's the company that I like for bras. And I wear, I, I've been known, well, they make, they make a sports bra, you know, and then they, they make a lot of bras. But there's a sports bra they have, and then there is, like, what I would call, what, my everyday bra. Mm-hmm. And I wear two different sizes in them. There you go. Even though it's the same company, and you assume they're somehow using the same sort of system, because it's a sports bra and because it's, you know, my daily bra or whatever, I wear a different size. Okay, so let's get back to digital pattern drafting, because I, like, forgot what we were doing. Um <laughs> So when you are though, if you're gonna pr- if you're gonna produce a pattern and like sell it, you can add things like different types of lines. Okay, like the size sixteen is dashed and the right. size twelve is, is dot dash and dot, da, 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 dot dot dash okay, dot dot. So you a can solid do that. line, whatever. That's pretty easy to do in a digital right program of course there are different line styles that you can choose or make uh you can add notches Mm -hmm. and that's where this kind of like walking the pattern piece can come in handy okay uh but you can also that's that's where um the pdf pattern companies can get really can do some really cool things because they can have you print different views and tape things together and um Et cetera, et cetera. So uh, a lot of companies, though, they're not going to give you the file that you can alter. Okay, of course, because they don't want you, like, messing with their pattern or taking their intellectual property, which you could still do um, (laughs) because you can trace over, you know, those PDF (laughs) patterns. And people have had trouble with that. Right. People will steal patterns that are produced digitally. Um, Now, it's harder to do it with a paper pattern but it still would be possible because you could take the measurements and you could right. approximate, you know. Uh, so now that this uh, – the other thing is now that this technology has become more widely available, you do see a lot of pattern companies just, like, pop things out. Right. You know, uh, or individuals just pop things out, uh, which, you know, can be a good or a bad thing, I guess. Uh, so anyway, um, you are you are drawing in this, you know – Basically, in this big digital space, you can grade to different sizes. You can grade when, if you want to go to bigger sizes, you know, you can, you know, do that too. Right. Now, it does get a little difficult because you have to think about those steps in between your sizes. And like, what was hard for me was I figured out, okay, this is our person who put down like the biggest size of their bust and the biggest size of their hip. Um, and this is our person who put down the smallest size and da 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 da. So I had to do a little bit of like rounding in order to make things not absolutely nuts and sort of to simplify. Um, but also when you go to your size charts and things like that, that's where you have to put in your ease or your negative right. ease. And so I give that information. And this is kind of funny because with the Rhapsody, we actually put some ease around like the hip. Uh, and a lot of people don't like that. <laughs> Surprising. Like a lot of people uh, don't enjoy it. And actually, I've tightened a few of mine up. Now we've given the procedure to do that. Right. But what I've done is. So I've said, hey, there's 10% negative ease or whatever at the waist. So where you're plotting 30, it's actually going to end up being 27, right? It's minus 10%. Right. And so where you – so that's how I'm labeling it, uh, which isn't 100% transparent, right? But it's a little more transparent than saying, oh, trace the size 6. (laughs) <laughs> you know, uh, if you have a if you have a size thirty waist, trace the size six. I'm saying no. If you have a size thirty waist, put your plot your point on the size thirty, and I'm telling you it has ten percent negative right. ease. Okay, now that's the same thing as somebody putting like uh, the finished measurements of the garment too. Right. Um, so that's another place, but that's where we're trying to be transparent. So when we put when we say oh, if you have a forty inch hip, there's five percent ease at the hip so that person is plotting on the 40 point they're actually going to get a 42 inch hip around but they could use that information and calculate backwards that's right okay if they wanted to or they can just make it and put it on then uh zip up the side seam you know as they're as they are doing it now here's where another thing 
happens that people ask about in the group. They ask about sizing up or grading up for their size. And if you understand that there's two inches between each size range, okay, so let's pretend that you are looking at a pattern. It only goes up to a size 12, okay? And the size 12 is for a 40-inch hip, and your hips are 44 inches, okay? Well, you go back to size 10 on the pattern, and you're measuring the steps in between. If you see how much there is in between. If you see how much there is in between, you can actually grade up the mm -hmm. pattern, okay? Now, it's not going to be the same inches because it's been divided up and da 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 da, da. Uh, there, you know it's it's a uh, proportionate to the grading in between the sizes but you can technically grade up your own pattern if you just absolutely love the silhouette or the concept or something like that you can grade up your own pattern i wouldn't recommend doing this for like several sizes but I, I have had somebody before say on the ginger jeans that they're like just outside the size range. Uh -huh. And so they think they'd be like a size, you know, I can't remember what her size goes up to. You know, they'd be a size 20 instead of a size 18 right. or something like that. And so that is a place, though, where you could get brave and you could manually do this. Right. You know, um, but a lot of pattern companies are getting into more inclusive sizing. They have heard the... They've heard the, the rumblings. Feedback. They've you heard know, the they've rumblings. Been, yeah, they've heard the feedback. And something that Shannon Flaherty said, she was like, you know, I'm just outside the ginger jeans size range. But I, and I could grade it myself, but I'd rather give my money to a company that already has my size. Right. And not worry, you right. know. And, and I thought, oh, yeah, like, right. I absolutely get right. that, you right. know, um, where I'd want to, wouldn't go there. And, when you get into some of the plus size things like we're talking about with the different cup sizes, um, that's something that seems to be popular in the plus size range right now with in indie patterns like cashmere does it and stuff. But it's something that also could go into what we'd call like more typical sizes. And you'll see that um, in some of the old school patterns. You'll see like in the Palmer Pletch stuff. Yeah. They're including cup size considerations and i'm like yeah that's where that's why everybody talks about full bust adjustments all the right. time um and that's where things get complex so i said that we've released patterns for underwear and a t-shirt but you and i are troubleshooting that woven camisole pattern right and you were like how do we get this dart to be a different depth because you can't just go up in bust size no. For someone right. who has the same rib cage size, da, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So we are trying to incorporate that functionality in our digital patterns, too. But I thought you had a dream about that, and you thought you had I think I got it. Out. Yep, I think Yeah, I, I thought about it, too, and I think maybe well, – I wonder if we had the same dream, but – I think, I think we, we got have. it. We might have. Um, so you can add, though, if you want – you know, anything that you're going to add to your digital, I feel like we're getting so off of like digital pattern drafting. And now I can't even remember what I talked about with digital pattern drafting. <laughs> anyway, it can be done in your Adobe it Illustrator. Um, it can be done. Um, it, it does take, it is a learning process. Oh, I did want to say, I think some people think it's going to be more accurate than hand drawing. Mm -hmm. No, not necessarily. And in, in fact. Well, that's, that's, I, you know. Because it's the same thing. I hate to, yeah, I kind of hate to say this in a way, but I find it to be so true. When all of those pattern oh, yeah. plotting programs came out, and they were not cheap, you know, they were five hundred dollars uh -huh. or whatever, and and um, I was, you know, a dealer for a company that was selling them and telling me I needed to sell X amount, you know, if I was going to stay in their good graces and all this, and I looked at them and I said, I can draft a pattern so much faster than this that fits so much better that doesn't even have the learning curve this has. Right. I mean, they were like, yeah, but you just have to take the numbers and put them in. Well, you, yeah, you have to take the measurements and you have right. to put them in. That's what you have to do when you're drawing your own pattern. I mean, and I had the pattern. I didn't have to print it out. Uh -huh. I, I had already had it drawn out. So it was very difficult for me. 
And I would spend all this time with everybody troubleshooting all the problems they were having. Yeah. You know, with those programs that they they thought if they paid five hundred dollars, that sucker should just fit. Yeah. And you know, I kind of felt that way myself. Yeah. Glad I don't work for that company anymore. Well, um, you know, I I. Because I was just being truthful with people. So if you do this digitally, right, you then have to print it out you do to have see if to it print works. It out, yes. So that's what Erin. I think that's you know something Erin said in her blog post. Right. She's like, this might not be for everybody, you right, know, um, right, right. But she's like, if you do get the pattern and you like it and you want to, I don't know, get it, you know, get it printed, right. you can. Um, that is, that is something that you can do. So hand drafting with these same rules right is something that you can do and you get to test it right then right you know you get to draw it on whatever right. your newspaper your wrapping paper right. your tracing paper you know whatever you're gonna do um and do it right then so a lot of you're right when people say oh well i think that this should fit and this is what a lot of the pattern companies that are saying will draft a pattern based on your measurements right they have a computer program doing it, and mm-hmm. it may work, you know, some of the time. Well, there are, uh, there are even retail clothing companies now Yeah, where you download an app into your phone, and, you know, it's men's shirts, men's jeans. Okay, they're probably going to fit better than something off the rack. Yeah. Because the sleeve length is probably going to be right. Well, okay. they, and they've you know, got those options, right? Right, 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 right. But, I mean, there are things, that, but it still doesn't mean it's going to always be a perfect fit. But if you're used to buying off the rack, and that's your only option, and the sizes that are out there, you are pro- you may be happy. You know, these people who are using this retail. Right. I, I can't remember some, but, you know, there's men's shirts out there. There's there's a jeans company out there. Um, there's also a couple of jeans companies that have um, went upside down. It hasn't worked. Well, and there are a few so, places that just say, oh, you want this higher rise? We're just going to put it as an option instead of just following whatever trend is out right, there. Right, right, you know? right, right. But what I'm saying is, like Mallory said, that doesn't me- measure how gushy you are. Nope. You know, it doesn't measure if it's, you know, everybody better take the measurement four days before their period or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, I mean, our our, our shapes, honestly, are not always consistent. Yes. And I have clothes that I wear at different times for different things. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you know, if I know I'm going to uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you better believe I've got on some loose pants. Now, um, I will say, let's get back to digital dr- pattern drafting instead of our bodies changing, which is what right. we talk about every other episode. Um, no, <laughs> It's because it just happens no, it's all so, the time. It's so related. It's such a consistent thing. Your body's not going to be the yeah. same when you wake up tomorrow morning. If this is something you want to learn to manufacture your own pattern line, I would say learn it. Okay, because as skills go, I think it is attainable. Okay, um, as skills go for publishing something like this, I think it is something that is fun to look into, that you can do. Um, if someone is going to draft a pattern for you, they're going to charge you, you know, a pretty premium range per hour which is totally fine and good uh you know they're going to charge you 35 dollars an hour they're going to charge you 50 dollars an hour because it is a specialized skill yeah but i do think that if you have the motivation that it is a it, it is a cool thing to learn like i really enjoyed learning it and i enjoy drafting our patterns and everything um and but I, I don't want to say it's easy, okay? But it, but I think it's it, it's very learnable. It's well, atta- it's, it's an attainable, a, yeah, it's attainable skill. thing. It's an yeah. attainable skill. Exactly. It certainly is. It's an attainable skill, and and I, a lot of people already have Adobe Illustrator. Yes, or you may access have, to it. Yeah, you may find it, or if you have Corel Draw, anything that it, so CAD. That's something we only right. now mentioned. Computer aided design. Right. Um, that is what those types of programs they're you called. Know, CAD are programs. called. Yes. Uh, but it is really interesting. So. I was, uh, this This isn't a huge revelation, but when I published the made-to-measure stocking thing, the pa- the tights, mm-hmm. okay, and I took a bunch of pictures of them as I made them to show people what to do, and then I realized that there was a much simpler way to do it, 
and I didn't have time to re-photograph it. And so what I did was I showed it in the program, like with illustration. Right. And I was like, duh. You know, I was right. <laughs> yeah, same with the floozy doozy. I used that, you know, I used Illustrator right. instead of like taking pictures of fabric. And I think there's uh, maybe a split in people who enjoy illustrations versus photographs. But yeah, I love uh, like both. Yeah. It depends on what's right. going on, you know. In it my also opinion. depends on how good the illustration is. That's right. Uh, so I think it. Or yes, the photo. How. I can't remember. It I was, depends. I was just looking at something and I was like. Why did anybody think this photograph would help? Yes, exactly. You know, it was like, why? This doesn't help anybody. Right. So that can be useful, though, too. And um, you learn, if you're in fashion school or whatever, that the pattern layout is important for companies. But then that's also something that we talk about. Right. Right? In garment sewing. And so I actually ended up for this company. They wanted the garment layouts. And I was like, oh. I do this all the time. Uh, right. I was like, I, I think about uh, where these things, and but I got to learn, you know, about that. Uh, that is disclaimer: why we don't have cutting layouts on our drafting guides because it's different for every for size. everyone for, for every everyone, size every size. I can't say, oh, for this size to this size, right. it'll be like this. It's because. I guess I could get because a... we don't know what the shape of your garment That's is going right. to be. That's right. We haven't we haven't decided ahead of time what the shape of your garment is. We let your body decide that. Yep. And then on any pattern, they have length and shorten lines. Well, so it could once, change once you get the pattern and you've got it out and you you know you've drawn it out. You lay it around a couple. Well, ways. and that's why it's not like I've done like a winter coat where there's a bunch of like. You know, right, fifty-two pieces, three-piece sleeve, or right. something like that. You know, uh, and I don't know if our company will ever do anything like that. Right. I don't know we'll ever make a drafting guide like in that way. Right. Who knows what's going to happen? But um, we're evolving who, as yeah, we always I just, will. I don't want to question right. it or, or put it uh, completely. What do I want to say? Put something out of the picture. Well, and I like I know what I want to do next. That's not a winter coat. I'm not sure what you want to you do. You don't next. want to do a winter coat next? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> maybe if McCall's just wants to put our name on a winter coat that I like. That happens. That, you know. That happens. That, that would too. be nice. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's the other thing. Okay, if you want to learn to draft your own patterns, <laughs> most people who have very successful sewing companies do not draft their own patterns. That's true. It's very true. <laughs> I thought they did. I learned. And no, I'm not saying everybody. And not you don't everybody. have to. No. And it's not what it's all about. But I was like, oh, why am I learning this? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else pays someone. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was interesting. All right. Well, I hope that we've rambled on enough about digital uh, pattern drafting. You did drafting. some rambling. I, if anybody has any questions on things I didn't cover... We'll record another episode to make up for it. <laughs> I promise. All right, everybody, you can get to us on Instagram. We're at SoHereCom. And ZD, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SoHere.com.